Last week I didn't post a video because I caught the flu, and a 39 degree fever is not the best condition to be making videos with. So, first things first, I need to start this video off with a minor correction. In the last vlog, I talked about a game I was playing called Roombo First Blood, and I said in that video that the full title of the game was Roombo First Blood Justice Sucks. Well, it turns out that Justice Sucks is a different game entirely from the same developers, and it is not, in fact, part of the title of Roombo. In my defense, the entry in my Steam library has it in the title, which is why I was confused. So why you would choose the game title as a place to plug your next project is a bit weird. Can you imagine if some other company did that? Like, if Square Enix titled something like Final Fantasy VI Pixel Remaster Dash Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. People would get mad that it also doesn't include the other thing, right? But this is a small indie dev doing stupid shit, so I guess it gets overlooked. Anyway, I finished Roombo, and while the idea was cool, after six levels, it felt sort of, like, half-baked. There's this weird emphasis on stealth throughout the game, but getting caught and having the thieves chase you around the house actually makes the game considerably easier. The only downside to the thieves chasing you like that is that it's harder to clean the house at the end of the stage, but the only punishment for that is a slightly lower level rank, and when all the levels are identical, who gives a fuck, really? Also, the game didn't have an ending. I beat the final level and the screen just went black. I couldn't interact with the game at all once that happened. If you look at the stream VOD on my YouTube channel as well, you will find that I even closed the game and beat stage 6 again, just because I was convinced at first that I had encountered like a bug or a crash, but nope, same black screen again. Uh, Roombo is a game that costs £5, but it feels like the kind of thing you would get on a PS1 demo disc, so, you know, what a bunch of shit. Anyway, with Roombo out of the way, I moved on to The Misadventures of Tron Bon on the PS1, and holy shit, how the fuck have I never played this game before? It's actually incredible. As a spin-off of Mega Man Legends, I was expecting it to be just more run-and-gun style shooty adventure game, but it's completely different to what I imagined. The game starts out with your brother getting kidnapped by a loan shark because he can't pay back his million zenny debt, so in an attempt to do that, the goal is to accumulate a ton of money and rescue him. The game is split into three modes that involve a classic Mega Man Legends-esque shooty adventure that involves robbing banks and bullying a police officer, a Sokoban-style block puzzle game that, despite my hatred for that kind of puzzle, I really enjoy for some reason, and an honest-to-goodness first-person dungeon crawler that involves solving puzzles and blowing up evil robots to find crystals. There's also mini-games that allow you to level up the stats of your little army of serve bots, and I have no real idea what the purpose of doing those level-ups are, but I'm sure as shit having fun doing it. I had no idea the game had that much, like, variety, and it's almost like having three games in one, and, like, there's Saturday morning cartoon tier voice acting on almost every line of dialogue, and it's quite endearing, and does a good job of kind of stringing the story along. I'm having so much fun with this one that I'm seriously looking forward to each and every viewer request stream recently. Also, if you didn't know, I have another channel that I use to archive any long plays of games that I do, and I use these long plays when I do reruns on the stream or if I have to go AFK for an extended period. I recently recorded Doom for that channel, so you should go check that out. So for the next long play, I decided I would record Super Mario Kart on the Super Nintendo, and holy shit do I kind of suck at this game. When it comes to the later Mario Karts, I'm not one of these insano bump off a wall and finish a lap in four seconds kind of guy, but you know, I'm competent enough. I can finish all the cups on the highest CCs available without much issue, but in this game, I feel like I'm only winning these races by a small margin each time. There doesn't seem to be any drifting like there is in literally every other game after it, so I find myself eating shit on walls or hitting the dirt quite often. I've yet to come anything other than first in each cup so far, but it's not quite as easy as I was expecting it to be when I decided to start recording. And finally, of course, I made some progress in my main game so far, which is Grandia 2. I made it to the Cathedral Town, spoke to a very obviously evil Pope guy who sent me on a quest to go find a Sword of Legend that is said to smite evil. I bet my money on it being an evil sword that he needs to take over the world, but I digress. 
The quest then took me to another town where some gate of darkness got opened and led to what I can only describe as probably the ugliest dungeon in JRPG history. This weird puke green factory that's sort of hard to navigate and filled with weird creatures like brains with wings and skeletons that have been grafted onto snails. I think I'm near the end of the dungeon, but I'm, I doubt that the Sword of Legend will be here. That seems a bit too easy, and I'm sure there'll be some kind of difficult boss fight that will result in some big plot twist of some kind. I'm still completely stunned at this point just how little of this game I remember from my playthrough back in, like, high school. None of this feels even remotely familiar. It feels like I'm playing the game for the first time again. Anyway, that's it for this week. Hopefully I won't get sick again, and I'll actually make a bit more progress in Grandia than I did in the last two fucking weeks. So, uh, I'm gonna go make a start. Peace!